If the Pope can have a private army that protects him, the Swiss Guard, and he can have borders that protect him from anyone just walking into his residence, guarded by people with machine guns, why can't the rest of the body of Christ? On Easter Sunday, the Archbishop of Canterbury, before his Easter sermon, is surrounded by a wall of police, including armed police. If he is entitled to armed protection, why aren't the rest of the Christian community? Why are our great church leaders justifying armed protection for themselves while saying that the average Christian in the pew is not allowed martial protection? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the debate that we should be having in our churches. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, on this topic, on this topic, on this topic? Remember when we had that non-existent 100 far-right demonstrations around the country? Right. How many million pounds did the government give for the protection of mosques? Compare that to what protection churches get. It's a great question from Steve. Occasionally, I do. It, occasionally he does ask good questions. But do you all remember when the left spewed out this lie that there was going to be a hundred right-wing riots across the United Kingdom? And by that lie, and the person that first spewed it has never been found or identified or arrested or fast-tracked into prison, because they're a left-wing militant that did it. The government promised tens of millions of pounds for the protection of churches. Mosques. Sorry, mosques in this country. Meanwhile, there are churches being attacked in East London. There are churches being attacked less than half a mile away from this park by Muslims. What protection are the churches being offered? There are Christians in this country that have had to flee their home city in Manchester and Reading and Birmingham. And what crime did they commit? Their crime was to become a Christian from a Muslim background. And the harassment that they received from the Muslim population meant that they had to flee their home cities. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a term for that. It's called refugee. It's called internally displaced person. In the UK, because of the government's unwillingness to tackle Islamist Christophobia, we have refugees internally displaced Christians inside the United Kingdom. And ladies and gentlemen, and you my brothers and sisters, the reason why our liberal, secular, atheist Prime Minister will not tackle it is because you will not challenge him. Because you will not confront him. Because you will not heckle him and boo him and challenge him and protest him wherever he walks in the streets of England. But that is exactly what you should do. No member of this Labour tyranny should be allowed to walk the streets of England without being challenged by the people of England in a democratic and peaceful way. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. On the quest, on the topic, sir. Right, the question that we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is David Lammy's comments 
about the ethnic cleansing of Armenian Christians. I believe that the British government should be sending British arms to Armenia to fight Azerbaijani jihadists. Wherever Christians are being persecuted, the Western world and Eastern Europe and Christian Latin America and Christian Sub-Saharan Africa and the Christian Philippines and Christian South Korea should be sending weapons and arms to fight against jihadis armies wherever they persecute Christians. These people cannot be negotiated with until they are defeated militarily. Furthermore, we should arrest, discriminate against, prosecute and banish from our lands any Muslim in any of our countries that supports any Islamist ideology. We do not need these people in England. We do not need these people in France or in Germany. Those that support Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, the Janjaweed, or any other Islamist militant force should be imprisoned and should be expelled from Europe. We do not need you. We do not want you. You are not welcome here. Leave our lands. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? On the topic. What's your question? Brilliant. So it brings up a good point, and I want to make this clear. I do not believe that every Muslim is an Islamist. I know Muslims who are not Islamists. And to those Muslims, I want to say, consider yourselves exempted from my earlier comments. If you are able to live in peace with us, according to our laws and our way of life without trying to advance your backward degenerate Sharia law, then you are welcome to stay as our guests, as our neighbours and as our friends. My comments are about what our government should do to those thousands that we've seen marching in London supporting Hamas in its desire to wipe out Israel, ladies and gentlemen. Any other questions on the topic? He had his hand up first. Yes, well, next I've question. Been to, I've been to five of them. And I have seen no a single pro Hamas. Thank you. Next question. Steve. People, including Jews. Steve. Use it or lose it. You're ignoring me now. I'm you're not, ignoring me now. I'm not sure whether like you will answer. consider this on topic. Here we go. The typical Christian, the Christian bullshit. Yesterday I got back again. from now the National Reform Conference. Now he's ignoring me completely. Sorry. Stuck. Yesterday I got back from the National Reform UK yeah. political conference. Yeah. Great conference, great speakers, great speakers. A number of the speakers made references to things such as the reality of our Judeo Christian background to this country, yeah. the importance of maintaining the yeah. Judeo Christian um, aspect of our society, yeah. the dangers that all the things you talk about are yeah. bringing to our society. Um, the dangers of gender nonsense being taught in our schools. Yeah. So many things that, that are on your agenda. Yeah. Can you now support reform again? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So the question is, can I as a Christian support Reform UK? And if you want to listen to me, I advise you to come a little closer. If you want to listen to the hecklers <laughs> over there and the debate over there, go and stand over there. So, ladies and gentlemen, in answer to the question, there are many things that I have synergy with in terms of the Reform Party. However, 
The Reform Party is not a Christian party. And I fear when he talks about Judeo-Christian culture, what they really are talking about is just a 1950s England. In other words, a fetishized understanding of what a Christian culture looks like, which is still better than Britain in 2020, in the 2020s. But ladies and gentlemen, if the Reform Party wants my support, it must come out as openly pro-life. It must declare Christ as King. It must say that the family as defined by the church is the bedrock of our society, man and woman, not any other formula or any other way. And, ladies and gentlemen, the Reform Party must reject liberal forms of multiculturalism. Liberal multi multiculturalism has failed. And as I understand it, reform takes none of those positions. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. So I'll give you an example of a political party that does. It's called the Christian People's Alliance, ladies and gentlemen. That's a Christian political party that you can support and get them. Do you want to debate, Steve? Right. If you don't want to debate, let me do a QA. and a Okay, right. So what, what are we going to debate? Whether Christians should support the Reform Party? Versus support Christian people. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to debate whether Christians should support the Christian People's Alliance or the Reform Party. Over to you, Steve.